Hey, this is Mike. I'm here with my good buddy Matt. He's back here for some more questions. And um, he's, an, he's an engineer student at UNC Charlotte. And uh, so, you know, we had a question in the last video in the comment section. And that is, what's the difference between like different fuel types? 93 octane, 87 octane, that kind of stuff. So, I don't know if, how, how to frame that question, but that's kind of what they were getting at. Okay. So, no matter where you go, whenever you buy gas, you're always going to look and see 87, 91, and 93. And a lot of people aren't really sure what that means. So, to understand it, you have to under, like, really think about what is an engine. And the technical definition of an engine is an, a module that can take a source of potential energy and convert it into kinetic energy, which is gasoline being potential energy and obviously your forward motion is the kinetic energy. So why are there different grades of gasoline? It's because there are different engine types, you know. So the, the way gasoline makes power is the hydrogen molecules and the carbon molecules are bonded in such a way that they, they, there's um, a substantial amount of energy in, in the bonds between them. So when you release the bonds, when you break them, all their energy is going to be released. And you can do that by combustion. Now, the difference between the octanes is just different grades or different levels of refinement. And between the levels of refinement, you actually find a resistance to combustion. The lower the octane rating, the lower the amount of specific heat it takes to combust the gasoline. What that means, it takes more energy or more, more heat to start 93 octane gasoline from burning than it does to take 87 octane gasoline from burning. And that and the engines create different amounts of heat based on what they're supposed to do. It all goes, it all correlates with what you consider an engine's compression ratio. We understand that the fundamentals of an engine allow it, allow a piston to come down and siphon in air and gas. And when it rises, it compresses it. When you compress any gas or a liquid, it's going to get hot. And as you compress it more and more, the hotter it gets. So if you've got fuel that combusts easily, that requires a low temperature to burn, it's going to want to combust before it needs to. What that means is when the, right before the piston is at the top is going to combust, which is actually going to push the piston back down or create negative forces, negative um, forces inside the engine. And a lot of people refer to this problem as spark knock, um, knocking spark, uh, what do they call it, compression ignition is the technical name for it. I've, so, I've, is it like um, valve rattling when people no, say valve rattling? a lot of people call it spark knock. Okay. And basically that's just because the, the metal inside of the engine is being torqued the opposite way that its inertial energy is going because the gas can burn too early and push the piston down too late. Now the higher the compression ratio is the more power the engine is, can, is capable of making, making because the charge is compressed higher. So you're going to want to push the compression ratio of an engine higher, but it's going to cause you to want to have to run higher octane gasoline. gasoline. So when you have a higher performance engine, it's going to require a higher octane gasoline because it's going to have more heat inside the engine because it's a higher performance engine. And because it has more heat, you need a gasoline that's more resistant to burning. A spark plug has no problem burning any kind of gasoline, but when it's in an engine, you want it to burn the right time. So that's why you have different grades of octanes. It and kind of correlates with the compression ratio, I guess. It does correlate exact, completely okay. with the compression ratio. And certain other outside factors, you know, if, if your engine has force induction on it, or if your engine, you know, if you have a slightly advanced timing, any factor that's going to affect the atmospheric pressure or the density in the cylinder, but mostly the heat inside the cylinder, is what it's going to affect what kind of compression ratio it needs. If you have a car with a turbocharger on it, you're going to want to run a higher octane gas. If you have a, a, a smaller engine like the inline four that's more than likely going to have a higher compression ratio, you want to run a higher octane gas. Or if your engine is making a noise, like you, know, you hear repeating nails or screwdrivers or some small metal objects together, or like rattling a chain, it's because your engine is spark knocking or compression ignition, compression igniting. Interestingly enough, Compression ignition is why diesel engines run and is what separates diesel from gas. A spark plug ignites at gear and gas, gear, <laughs> air and gas mixed together, which causes it to push the piston down. A diesel engine pulls in just air and compresses it and then relies on diesel's 
ease to be burnt to ignite when it touches the hot air and force it down. Just Now is a 93 octane of a better quality? Some people might say, well that's just a cleaner gas. Is that any truth to that? Not necessarily. Principally no, but depending on the manufacturer of the gas it could. Um, some gas, you know, more expensive gas could, could contain, you know, natural oxidants and chemicals like tertial butyl lithium and trinitrile toluene, any like additives or whatever. It doesn't necessarily mean because you're buying a higher quality gas, you're getting more additives. All you're really buying is the more refined gas, which is more resistant to being burnt, which um, works better with higher compression engines. So sometimes it does, it's hard to really tell. Is there any advantage to use high, like 93 octane in, a, in a, just a regular engine that doesn't have, real, have a real high uh, compression ratio? A lot of people think there is. A lot of people think that whenever they put 893 octane gas, they're going to gain some few horsepower. You may, you may gain a few, like a mile to the gallon more because you've got a more thermal efficient gasoline, but it's going to be negligible at best. The best thing you can do is to save the money that you can and buy the gasoline that keeps your engine running above, you know, spark knocking or compression igniting, but I wouldn't waste your money on something. If you have a race car, yes, you need to run high octane gasoline because you, you're running high, you know, higher compression ratio inside your engine, so you're going to need higher octane gas. But for a normal car, there's not really much. It's marginal at best, the benefit. So the manufacturer suge suggested octane gas is probably the best for most vehicles. The manufacturer suggests the gasoline octane rating comes from engineers and because I'm training to be an engineer I really understand why they tell you to do it. They're not telling you to do it for no reason. When the engineers suggest to do something it's a good idea to do it. They designed the engine to run at this specific you know with these specific variables you know they're not supposed to be the constraints in which an engine operates are not supposed to be altered too far. So it is best to run what is recommended. All right, thanks, Matt. And uh, if anybody in the, wants to make a comment and and you know a question in the comment section, and we'll try to our best to uh, to check it out, evaluate it, and um, see if we can answer the question. Uh, thanks, Matt. And anybody in the comments, um, if you want to also have any kind of like in addition to what he just said, if there's anything we maybe he skipped out on or I didn't get something right, any corrections, comments, anything like that will be really appreciated as well. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks.